Well, Yub Nub, good job. We did it. 100 episodes. Woohoo! <laughs> I cannot believe it has been over two years now that I have started making my run through the expanded universe, and here we are at episode 100. Folks, again, I have to thank you so much for your support, uh, subscribing to the channel, and just motivating me and pushing me through this long running series as I go through the Star Wars Expanded Universe in chronological order as best I know how. All right, so I'm super excited to talk about for the 100th episode, a great book by John Jackson Miller titled Kenobi. Now, this book is basically about Obi-Wan Kenobi settling into Tatooine after he's dropped off Luke to the Lars homestead. Uh, when this book came out, I was not impressed when I heard about it. I was like, oh, a Kenobi book, that's going to be boring. You know, I read it as him, his first year on Tatooine or whatnot. I was like, who cares? Nothing's going to come of it. It's going to be boring. And then I guess it's okay, he's going to come across Jawas, Sand People, and a Krayat Dragon, I bet. And of course, all those predictions came true. But what I didn't predict was how dadgum great this book was going to be. To sum up what John Jackson Miller was thinking when he wrote this book, he said he is a longtime Lonesome Dove fan, which, you know, I love that little miniseries too. And he wanted something like that for this Kenobi book. So when he pitched it, Shelley Shapiro, who was the chief editor at Delray at the time, said, yeah, okay, let's do it. I like that idea. And I'm glad she approved this because this was really good. It's a sci-fi western. Um, it's not really focused on Obi-Wan. It is about Obi-Wan, but he's more of the guest star. He's the stranger that rolls into town in the small town on Tatooine where you have like bartenders, shopkeepers, and whatnot. And of course, the Tusken Raiders are taking the role of the Indians because they're always raiding through the town. And when I started understanding what John Jackson Miller was going uh, for, I was like, Shut up. That is incredible. I get it now. It's a Western theme and it works. It works so well. And don't get me wrong. You do get to see a little bit about Kenobi. You do get to know a little bit more about him. One of the fun things that John Jackson Miller did in his book was he gave us a reason for why Obi-Wan looks so old in episode four. If you think about it in episode three, it was the young, dashing Ewan McGregor. And then only 20 years later, we're supposed to believe he changed into the old wrinkly Sir Alec Guinness. Now, you know, that may not have bothered many people, but it was a question that a lot of people were saying. It's like, why is he so old in episode four if only, you know, 18 years went by? And they give you a reason in this book. In fact, his reason is very plausible of why Obi-Wan would even want to age himself. Everything about this book is just so, so good. Now, there are several references within the expanded universe, of course, right? Uh, uh, John Jackson Miller added a familiar Tuscan race to the storyline. That's all I'll say about that. Uh, he also went to Galaxy Guide 7 from West End Games. And just like all the other authors, they had the West End Games material, I think, I guess, emailed to them. But they always studied that West End Game material. And John Jackson Miller said that Galaxy Guide number 7 was his most influential uh, piece for his book. So he took lots of references from that. He actually took a character invented in that Galaxy Guide and gave him a cameo in the book. So once again, you see where Westing Games had a huge influence within the expanded universe the whole way through. The last connection that you're going to see is that there is a connection from the old Marvel Star Wars comic books, issue number two, uh, which another character makes an appearance as well. Uh, reading this book was a pure delight. I loved every minute of it. In fact, I remember when it came out the, at the Comic Con that year, they had brought out special key change, Kenobi key change, which called Krayat Dragons. Now you can still get the Krayat Dragon collar keychain uh, online for kind of cheap, I think, because, you know, no one really wants it that much. But that was a cool idea. I don't have one. If I had one, I think that'd be really awesome. But it was a really unique promotional idea from Delray, and I like it. Now, what did I think of Obi-Wan in general as a book? Overall, I think it's an excellent, excellent novel. It's not in my top ten, but if I 
had a top 20, it would definitely be in my top 20. That's how much I loved it. I remember getting on the phone and calling a buddy of mine saying, hey, did you pick up the new Kenobi? He went, nah, is it any good? I said, dude, it's great. You got to read it now. He went out and bought, bought it and read it and he loved it. He loved it. Uh, so yeah, I think you should definitely read this one. Uh, it is just absolutely, it's, it's John Jackson Miller's best book, in my opinion. I don't think he got any better. Even I'm even counting the Knights of the Old Republic series, comic book series, which I loved, but I think Kenobi is his best story, hands down. All right, folks, that is all the time I have for now. We'll see you next time.